Welcome to Edge Kids. As a family, we get to know Christ, be the church, and serve our community with a message of hope, truth, and love. We're so excited that you're here with us today. Hello, it is so great that you have joined us this week. I'm actually super, super excited about today because we are continuing on talking about people of the Word. Remember, the Word is the Bible. There's actually so many incredible people in the Bible. And I love that we've been able to put a little spotlight on some of those. In the Old Testament, we put a spotlight on Noah and then a few pages later, Moses and a bit later, Ruth and Naomi and a bit later, Jonah. Again, there's so many people that we missed in that, but you can read a bit more at home to find out a few more characters from the Old Testament. And then last week, we started in the New Testament looking at a few different people. Do you remember last week? Who did we talk about? He baptised Jesus. Can you think? Can you think? John the Baptist. Good work. So we talked about John the Baptist and how he was a messenger of Jesus. And remember, we prayed and encouraged each of you that you can be a messenger of Jesus as well, spreading the good news of Jesus wherever you go. So today we're going to find out a little bit more about another character in the Bible. But before we do, I know you enjoyed him last time. Master Trivia was a bit of a, he was, he was thumbs up to Master Trivia. So we're going to go to him again. But before we do, let's, let's work on this clap. All right, this time, when you clap for trivia time, you are not allowed to separate this part of your hand. So you can only go like that, just with your fingers. It's actually very hard. Are you ready? One, two, three. It's trivia time with Master Trivia. Welcome, kids, to trivia time. I'm your host, Master Trivia, and we're gonna switch your brains on a little bit and get your brains a little bit, a little bit, a little bit looser, you know, a little bit looser. All right. Now, before we start, we did this last week, so I hope you guys remember. If you don't, that's all right. What, what's gonna happen is when I say trivia, you guys are all gonna say time, okay? Now, guys, I know your parents may not think this. They say, don't do this, but this is your time to yell as loud as you can, okay? You can yell as loud as you can. Your parents are watching, okay? On the count of three, when I say trivia, I want you all to yell time. You ready? Trivia! Time! Trivia! Time! Trivia! Time! Oh, you guys are gonna blow my ears off! Good job! Alright, we're gonna get straight into Bible trivia. So, question one. What did Jesus do for a job? Hmm. Now I know there was no Hungry Jacks back in the day, so it definitely didn't work far at the fast food department. Have you worked at Kmart? Nah, Jesus didn't work at Kmart. What's that? A what? A carpenter? Oh, like the carpet? No, not a carpet or wood. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's right, I remember reading that. All right, question two. How many disciples did Jesus have? I'll give you some time to think. I, I need to think as well. <laughs> it wouldn't have been 30. Would it? No, it wouldn't be 30. 20? What's that? You can yell it out if you want. 12? If you said 12, correct! It's good, good job. Last question. How many books are there in the New Testament? So not the whole Bible, just the New Testament. It's a bit of a tricky one. So I'll give you some time to think. I need to think as well. Well, there's 66 books in the Bible. It can't be a hundred. Ooh, I know some of you are pretty good at maths. If you said 27, you got a bang on correct. Good job. All right, now we're gonna play a game of Guess Who. Now, we did this last week, so we're gonna do it again. If you remember it, great. If you don't, that's right, I'll explain it. We're gonna play a game of Guess Who. But when Master Trivia runs Guess Who, it's not just Guess Who, it's Guess Who, okay? So, when I say Guess, I want everyone yelling Who, okay? Parents aren't here, so yell as loud as you can, okay? Okay, you ready? Hey guys, we're gonna play a game of Guess Who? Good job, one more time. We're gonna play a game of Guess Who? Oh, my ears are ringing, good job, all right. The first clue, this Bible character in the New Testament, anointed or God, Jesus, 
with oil. Hmm. Have a think. Have a think. It smells nice. Hmm? Question. Um. There's no clue to. It's not a question to. They loved praising Jesus. What? What's that? Music. Jesus, you're my superhero. Oh, sorry, I forgot I was here. Right, they love praising Jesus. All right, have a think, have a think. Question three. They loved serving the Lord. Oh, what's this? What's this? Ooh, it's kind of like an apron. Oh. oh. They love serving the Lord. What do you guys think it is? Hmm. If you said Mary, you are correct. It is Mary. Good job. You guys are bang on point today. All right. I got to go, but I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Mary, 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 Mary. Very good. Now, there are so many Marys in the Bible, so you might be getting a little bit confused, but you're about to hear the story about the Mary that we're talking about today. Now, she might not be the most famous person in the Bible, but there is so much that we can learn from this Mary that we're talking about today. So, are you ready? Drum roll, please. Let the story begin. This is the story of Mary. There are lots of different Marys in the Bible, but this Mary is Mary of Bethany, Lazarus' sister. Everyone say, hi, Mary. Hi. Mary was a friend of Jesus. She loved him so much. She loved to spend time with Jesus, worship Jesus, and she loved that Jesus was her friend. Mary was also a sister. She was a sister to Martha and a sister to Lazarus. Nearly every time Mary is mentioned in the Bible, she's with her siblings. She must have loved to be with them too. One day, Jesus was planning to visit Mary and Martha at their home. How awesome. They were so excited that Jesus was coming. They had a lot to do to prepare for him. She put on her apron and you know what? She started prepping. She started getting ready for Jesus coming. They had so much to do. Even once Jesus had arrived, Martha was still busy working so that everything would be perfect for Jesus, but not Mary. She took her apron off and she decided that the best thing to do was to sit at the feet of Jesus. She listened to him and she worshipped him. This made Martha pretty upset because she thought Mary should be helping her in the kitchen. But Jesus explained to her, it's more important to be spending time with him than doing things for him. We all love to spend time with our friends and so did Mary. All she wanted to do was spend time with her friend Jesus. Mary was a friend of Jesus and Jesus was a friend of Mary's. He loved her so much, so much so that he performed a pretty incredible miracle for her and her family. Mary's brother Lazarus was really sick. Mary had asked Jesus to come and heal him, but Lazarus died before Jesus got there. Mary was so upset. She began mourning because she thought that if Jesus were able to have been there, Lazarus wouldn't have died. But Jesus wasn't worried at all. In fact, when everyone was mourning because Lazarus was dead, Jesus went to the grave and told Lazarus, come out. And guess what? He did. Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead. How incredible is that? Thank you, Jesus. Mary loved Jesus so much that one time she got a jar a very, very, very expensive perfume that smelled really, really good. And she poured it on Jesus's head. She then used her hair to wipe his feet. Not everyone thought this was a good idea. They thought it was a waste of money and the money of the perfume could have been spent to help the poor. Some of them were even a little bit mean to Mary when she did this. But Jesus loved that Mary did this. He loved her heart to worship him. Mary was a friend of Jesus. She loved to be with him and spent a lot of her time following him to different places, listening to him speak. She even went with him to the cross. And when Jesus rose again, who was there? Mary. She was a friend of Jesus until the very end. This is the story of Mary. Everyone say, bye Mary. How cool would it be to just be like, 
Mary and just be like, oh yeah, Jesus, he's my friend, he's my pal, we're buddies. I think that's pretty cool. You know what? If you want to read more about the story of Mary and Martha when they had Jesus in their house for dinner, imagine that. Oh yeah, Jesus is just popping over for dinner. Luke chapter 10 in the Bible. And then the crazy miracle of the dead man's Lazarus actually being raised again to life. That is in John chapter 11. So Luke 10, John chapter 11. You can read a little bit more about those stories there. But I want you to have a think. Could you say that Jesus is your friend? Maybe he's not coming over for dinner. Maybe he's not raising your brother from the dead in those spaces. But I want you to think about, is Jesus actually your friend? Do you know what? We can invite Jesus into our hearts. Jesus isn't right here physically with us, but he's actually with us all the time. And we can invite him into our hearts. You can't get closer than that. He can't be a better friend than that. You know what? Jesus has actually come to save us. He can be our saviour. That's where that comes from. And he can be our friend. He's always with us. He will never, ever, ever, ever leave us. So I want to ask you, if you want to invite Jesus into your heart, Maybe it's the first time that you've prayed a prayer like this. Or maybe you've prayed a prayer like this lots and lots of times. But today's a good day to just remember and go, Jesus, I thank you that you can be my friend. And I thank you that you can be in my heart. I'm going to pray a prayer. And I would love for you to pray it out nice and loud after me. Because this is something special that we can do to say, Jesus, just like Mary, who was your friend, I want to be your friend as well. I want you to save my life like you did Mary. Okay, you want to pray this after me? Amazing. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you can be my saviour. I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. And I thank you for your forgiveness. I love you, Jesus. I want to live for you, Jesus. In your name, amen. Amen. That's so cool that every one of us can have Jesus in our heart. You can't get a better friend than Jesus. He always listens to your prayers. He's always with you. You're never, ever alone. He's so encouraging. He's the best friend that you could ever, ever have. And if that's the first time that you've prayed a prayer like that, the first time that you've made a decision for Jesus to be your friend, I want you to tell someone today, maybe tell a leader or tell an adult that's there with you because it's a really special thing to say, you know what? I want Jesus in my heart. That is so, so cool. We love you guys. So excited for the future ahead for all of you. See ya. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's amazing that we can gather together, grow together and go together. We love you so much and we can't wait to see you again next week.